A new online bookstore, IndieLector.store, is unlike any other. IndieLector.store offers great prices from top indie authors and supports authors at the same time by paying them more for their books. IndieLector.store has a readers club that gives you free books and special deals. Watch the IndieLector.store continue to grow before it opens in the fall of 2019 at IndieLector.store. And now, on to the show. My name is Christine Demick, the author of Detox Your Home, which is a guide to removing toxins from your life and bringing health into your home. Book lovers unite. I'm Demetrius Jackson, and you're listening to the Chapter One Podcast. The greatest stories ever written all begin with Chapter One. In each episode, our guest authors will share their first chapters with you. Okay, so this episode is for anyone who's interested in living a happy and healthier life. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Christine Demick, who's the author of the book, Detox Your Home. Christine is a health and wellness advocate and the founder of Good Home Company. In this book, she takes a deep dive into the toxins found in your very own homes and how you can eliminate your exposure to take control of your own health. So we have a fantastic conversation. Christine has a lot of energy and she has a lot of information that she's going to share with us. So stay tuned because it starts right now. Introduction, how the story began. My journey to a toxin-free life started 20 years ago. As the founder of The Good Home Company, a natural products company specializing in green cleaning products, I have long been a proponent of a natural, healthy lifestyle. My inspiration for Good Home was my grandparents' farm in Ohio, a place where I spent my childhood summer swimming in the pond, foraging for morels, and eating sweet corn pulled off the stalk in the field. When I first started in 1994, natural cleaning did not exist. Aveda had just taken off and Martha Stewart ruled the airwaves. There was a desire, as there is now, for products that are good for you. Essential oils were being discovered, again, and my love of nature and farm stands inspired me in my own kitchen to create body and home care products over the stove. So with a few pots and pans, pantry ingredients, and a big dream, the Good Home Company was officially founded on my grandmother's birthday, September 18th in 1995. From day one, I created everything by hand, still do for products, right down to the labels. Each bubble bath and hand cream was made like a pie from scratch, and I personally delivered them to my neighborhood customers in Chelsea. One day, simply out of need, I created a laundry detergent with essential oil of lavender and natural laundry soap. It was an instant hit. Turns out I was not the only one seeking cleaning products that had a recognizable smell and not some made-up scent called Orchard. With that one product, we grew by leaps and bounds. Awards and press were daily occurrences and a new industry was formed. This could have been it, and I definitely thought it was my story, when in fact it was just a chapter. For someone who had worked 20 years in the natural products category, no one was more surprised than I was when I got the diagnosis almost two years ago of breast cancer. However, I am pretty sure you could poll anyone who has received a cancer diagnosis and they will tell you it is always shocking. Although it certainly is not something I ever hope to receive again, for me, cancer was a gift. I was diagnosed extremely early and after surgery and daily radiation for three months, I was cured. My risk of breast cancer returning is 5% or less. Having lost several friends to cancer in their mid-40s, I felt incredibly fortunate to be a survivor and greeted my daily treatment with joy and appreciation. When given a life-threatening disease, you are guaranteed to go through some changes and analysis of your person. For me, the lesson was clear. I was being called to share the research I was uncovering and bring awareness on how so many of our day-to-day products are detrimental to our health. Most of us, including me, think that the government does safety checks. Surely everything is tested for its safety to our health and environment. In fact, this couldn't be further from the truth. In my own industry, we are constantly updating our ingredients as new information comes out. 20 years ago, we all used parabens as a preservative, and then it was found that they can disrupt your endocrine system. 
10 years ago, we all used sodium laureth sulfate, which is a plant-derived chemical that is a common soap synthetic found in everything from detergent to baby wash. However, now it is known as a skin irritant and can also be contaminated with 1,4-dioxane, a carcinogen. In 2013, Thai detergent, which used SLS, was reformulated after it was found to be contaminated with more than 60 ppm of 1,4-dioxane. The U.S. government threshold is 25 ppm and less. So thankfully, because of independent testing, this was caught and rectified. But the question remains, if something is known to be a carcinogen, such as 1,4-dioxane, why is it even allowed in our products when we know it caused cancer in laboratory animals? Why doesn't Procter & Gamble have to test every batch of Tide? Another ingredient of concern, which we have banned from good home products, is phthalates. Phthalates are known to disrupt our endocrine system, which monitors everything from metabolism, growth and development, tissue function, sexual function, reproduction, sleep, and mood. If that is the case, then why are they allowed in everything from baby lotion to $300 face creams that we use every single day? Is it any surprise that children are reaching puberty earlier and women are having a harder time getting pregnant? Although we are living longer, we are not living healthier. One out of two men and one out of three women will get cancer in their lifetime. This is probably no surprise to you because of the number of diagnoses you see in your own community. Even medical practitioners are concerned with this increase and are calling on government and manufacturers to step up and do their job in protecting us and making sure what they sell us is safe. In her enlightening book and PBS special of the same name, A World Without Cancer, Dr. Margaret Cuomo, a board-certified radiologist, shares her vast knowledge of this disease and how she sees our constant exposure to these chemical toxins in our daily lives as a definite detriment to our health, impressing on us to demand action from our government and manufacturers to be much more responsible in their regulations and ingredient choices. The global economy we live in is being led by big business, creating chemicals, technology, clothing, food, and beauty products that are not being tested for their long-term damage to our health. In the meantime, we and our planet are the guinea pigs. The way of the world is to get the product on the market, money in the pocket, and then worry about safety. There is no reason why anything of harm to ourselves or to our environment should be released. Although one would hope that a company has moral values, we know this is not something we can count on, and therefore we need to look to our own governments to put our health and wellness before money and growth. What I find most disturbing is how big businesses alter the facts from consumers for profit. They're selling health when, to the contrary, the ingredients of their products are quite the opposite. The biggest abuser is the food industry, but the beauty industry isn't far behind. The problems are vast but not hopeless. We as consumers have the power. By refraining from instant gratification and on-demand consumerism, we can change the current landscape. That combined with putting our health and planet's well-being first and demanding companies do the same will indeed make a difference. This altruistic view is entirely possible and already happening. From larger businesses like Eileen Fisher, who repurpose their own clothing into new garments, to the surge of local farmers markets selling heirloom vegetables grown from the non-Monsanto seeds, to the rise of artisans creating everything from skincare to repurposed furniture and finding it in mainstream stores. It is an inspiring time, and conscious consumerism is a trend that is definitely being heard. Companies want to meet our demands, and they will listen and change where they source their ingredients from so that organic, non-GMO corn chips you bought are actually helping to change the world. Detox Your Home is my journey to a healthier home shared with you. It is a guidebook to help you examine and absorb, giving you the power to make the decisions that are right for you and your home. For instance, vinegar and water may be the cleaning choice for you in your home, or you may be okay with using a little soap that is highly processed from coconut oil. This is not about judgment, but about providing you with the information to make your own decisions. Although I do share my opinions throughout my book, my findings are based on facts and science and interviews with leaders in their fields of expertise. It is my belief that you cannot have a healthy home without addressing all parts. Like Eastern religion believes, you must address the individual to heal the whole. So I will share foods that are proven to heal, bring good health, and should be in your fridge and pantry. We have all heard the story about mattresses and how they are toxic. That will be covered too. 
Do you really need to wear an earpiece when talking on your cell phone? The answer is yes. And did you know that one of the biggest pollutants on our planet is fast fashion? That $5 t-shirt at H&M is extremely harmful in so many ways. And although not affecting your health directly, it is affecting the health of the worker making it and the environment your child or their children will live in. I will show you other choices you have that won't hurt others or the environment. In his book, The Third Plate, Dan Barber eloquently and passionately looks at how mass agriculture is poisoning our land and decreasing the nutritional value of our food. This Michelin star chef could sell out and continue to capitalize on the farm-to-table concept, but instead he is leading an effort to change the way we see agriculture, an effort that is making a difference. In fact, the New York Times just reported that major food brands are scrambling to fill the center aisles. Why? Because the message is finally reaching the masses, and we are buying more fresh foods and not buying processed grains and cereals anymore. This is a new world we are being called on to change. Our resources are already exhausted and the tank is on red. We, our friends, our family, our neighbors, and our co-workers all know this. It is our leaders and big businesses who don't, but they do see where we spend our money. Every time you shop, you are expressing incredible power, and the choices you make are directly related to our own health and our planets. It is really up to you. My job is to give you the knowledge. The more we know, the more we can use that knowledge for the health of ourselves in the future. Detox Your Home is a compilation of these facts, giving you the power to make that journey to wellness for you, your home, and the planet we call home. Thank you for joining me. How do I find the right keywords for my book? Or how do I even start writing a book in the first place? These questions and more are answered in the new Chapter One podcast, Ask Me Anything video series, available on YouTube. In these videos, I'm going to be answering your literary questions about media, marketing, publishing, and technology. So think about anything you've ever wanted to know about writing, publishing, and promoting a book. And then send those questions to info at ch1podcast.com. To access these videos, just click the link in the show notes or search for Chapter One Podcast on YouTube. You really dive deep. Like, your book is seriously comprehensive. What's your background? So my background is as a CEO and founder of The Good Home Company. We have a natural cleaning products company that... I've had for over 23 years now, and um, I have a BFA from Parsons, and I have marketing and copywriting and advertising and a lot of writing, but nothing in science. So when I started The Good Home Company, I didn't rely on scientific formulations. In fact, I, I you know, relied on old natural remedies that our grandmothers and great-grandmothers used. And from that, as it grew, I then worked with chemists and, of course, was learning about the need for preservatives and when you don't need them and pHs and you know what, what it all means. So in writing the book, it, it is, it's intense. It was a lot of information, a lot of scientific information, but Demetrius, it's, it's actually available online. It's online in our government archives. You can look at The Lancet, you can look at NIH.gov. And I just looked at all that, you know, great sources like the New York Times. It was very important to me to use information that was documented and testing that is out there because then it it just makes it all the more impactful. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting you say that because, you know, we all wear clothes, eat food and, you know, use consumer products. But admittedly, we don't always think about the chemicals in those items and how they affect us. So why do you think people aren't as aware of these things as we should be? I, for so long too, felt this way. You know, you knew it might be fattening or you knew it's also great to eat a <laughs> pint of ice cream or whatever, right? Yeah. And so I think there's that assumption that if it's on the shelf, it has to be safe, right? And then when I went into this, it was just really shocking to me how so many of these ingredients that we know that they're damaging, but yet there's no warning. Of course, we have wonderful states like California, and this is going back a while. Jane Fonda, no, not too many people know this, but she was she was instrumental in getting Prop 65 passed. Hmm. Now, Prop 65, what it basically does is that it, anything that has a carcinogen in it, which is a cancer-causing ingredient, has to be listed. It has to be a warning on the bottle. 
So you can pick it up and you get to make that decision. Just like cigarettes, people smoke cigarettes. But now there's a warning on there. You know, this will kill you. So yeah. you need to know that, right? Yeah. That's what my work is. My work is to make sure that we get this either regulated or we get warnings on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people know, so you can make that choice. I'm not going to tell you to, that you should or shouldn't have it, but that should be on the label. In your intro, I appreciate it that you made the distinction that people are living longer due to, you know, modern medicine. However, we're not living as healthy. And that actually reminded me because not too long ago, I went in for, you know, just my regular checkup and the doctor was amazed. He said I was one of the few patients he had that wasn't on any kind of daily medication. And I'm like, whoa, are you serious? Yeah. And it just made me wonder, like, how did we get to this point? How did we get here? You know, um, it was gradual. So a frog, right? If you put it in a pot of water and it's lukewarm and you gradually heat it up to boiling, frog's never going to jump out. The frog doesn't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it just gradually cooks and cooks and cooks until it's too late. And this is what's happening with us. Right. So, so, okay. So, you know, my blood pressure is high or if I'm pre-diabetic and, you know, so I'm going to pop a pill and it's going to take care of it. And then I can go on with my day and I don't really have to think about anything or change anything. Right. Particularly as Americans, I think that we're so stressed that we are slaves to this consumerist buy and earn and work. And so we just pop a pill. It's easier, right? Yeah. It's easier than changing that diet. This took me a long time, you know, but I think once you taste health, right? Mm -hmm. Real health. And you feel that you don't go back. Yeah. yeah. And so once you become aware of that, then you just, you don't want to lose that health and it becomes very easy. I went to Universal Studios and I was able to eat vegetarian that into almost vegan the entire time, which is saying something. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah. You know, and I liked how you also mentioned a few natural products in your intro. Like, for example, you mentioned, you know, vinegar and water is a great cleaning agent. I just discovered apple cider vinegar, which has so many different functions. Yeah. For example, you can sit on a counter and it'll attract all the little gnats and insects you may have around yep. and it'll trap them. You can clean with it, as you mentioned. What I've been doing is I take a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with mother and about eight ounces of water and maybe a teaspoon of lemon. And I drink that before I eat. And I notice that I have no digestive issues afterwards. Beautiful. Um, I, I mean, it's great. It, it's, a, it's a great pH balancer as well. You want the pH. There, that's, there's a lot uh, going on about that now too, as well as the pH in your body and the mm -hmm. pH in your water. Uh, you want to stay alkaline. Here's the thing. We need very little, but that doesn't drive an economy, does it? Mm -mm. You're right. You know, Walmart's not going to be filled with baking soda, apple cider vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people make up stuff to sell us. They yeah. really do. I mean, that's, you know, you wake up to that fact and you're like, wow, you know. And then, you know, you also have to deal with the fact is why do we buy? Why do we, what void are we filling? And there is a void that need to, you know, constantly, I have a TV that's, you know, over 12 years old now. It's older than my son. <laughs> and, you know, my son said, oh, we need a new TV. I said, why do we need a new TV? This works fine. I'm not sure how old you are, but I started with no phone and then a flip phone. And then we had the BlackBerry and that thing was a tank. It lasted 10 years. And mm -hmm. now it's like with these iPhones, I, I'm buying a phone every six months. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 where does that go? We don't even stop to think of the process, right? And yeah. our electronics that we're just throwing into our landfills and it's eating up it's 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 awful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm I'm old enough to remember when a hashtag was a pound sign. <laughs> Put it that way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> On a dial-up phone? Yep. Okay, there you go. <laughs> well, when did you first get the idea to write this book? Was this something that you always wanted to do or did this grow out of the necessity to help others? The book came, so when when I got the cancer diagnosis, it was not a, it was not a great point in my life. I was, you know, working hard on the company. You know, we had several things that have happened, um, et cetera. And, and I, I was pretty stressed out. And then, you know, I, you know, get the phone and it's like, I'm sorry, but and then you you know what yeah. the following words are going to be. And then your life changes in that second, in that split second. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then I heard, too, that it was stage zero one. 
And I mean, this all happened within like six hours. You know, I have an amazing mom who got me into doctor and surgeon immediately right away. I'm fortunate to live in New York City where we have the best practitioners anywhere. And I knew pretty quickly within 24 hours that I was going to be just fine. Mm. You know, that this was scary, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I had to have surgery and that d- it didn't look like it was in my lymph nodes, but you, you were like, this is, this is going to be fine, you know, but I have to get through this. And I had a friend who my dear friend had passed away from kidney cancer at age 48 and left behind two young children. My mother has had cancer. Same time I was diagnosed, one of my uh, good friends had, she got the diagnosis of ovarian cancer that had spread throughout her entire body. She was at stage four and she, while I was recovering, she died within, you know, three months. And then my girlfriend, her husband, also in his forties, stage four colon cancer. And so we're all intuitive. We know which ends up, we know what's good for us and we know what, what isn't. And then we get away from that, right? We get into the machine and we get into our work and we get into life And then something like this can happen and to just make you sink back and be like, whoa, what's going on? And she said to me, Christine, you you need to be this voice, you know, because I started looking at all this stuff and we would talk about it. And she's like, you have to be the voice. And she just knew. And so I listened to that message. I really listened to it. And, um, And I can't explain it any more than that. You could call it God, you could call it, you know, the universe, you, you know, Mm -hmm. many people get this wake up call, but that it was very clear to me that the rest of my life was going to be doing whatever I can to promote this message of health and make people aware of where we're at and how we need to change. I cannot imagine what the writing process was for you. You've already said that it was just complete information overload. It was, but I was, I I mean, I was really guided. I was guided in every single step of the way. I'm very comfortable writing. I'm a, I I used to be a copywriter and, and, uh, you know, I write everything mainly for the company for good home. And I, I, and I had a book out that was on decorating that I wrote completely different subject many years ago, but yeah. So, you know, it was writing, but it was like, as I dug in deeper though, I would get, I would call up my husband and I was, I, you know, I mean, dental floss, dental floss is, is lined with Teflon. Now Teflon is the you know that stuff that's on our pants that we're not supposed to use anymore because there's a gas that comes on when it's heated too high. You know, but yet somehow for whatever reason it's proudly on our dental floss and that we're using this in between our teeth and I mean good mm. lord it, it you know the sodium lauryl sulfate that is in our toothpaste because we want it to foam, not because we need it, but because we want it to foam also causes canker sores, which then is, you know, there's another medicine for that. But the problem is, is basically just take that out and go to a natural toothpaste. That chapter on its own was, I mean, I I was learning as I was going on. So I just go in deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole and speaking with people, I met amazing people, amazing people who shared with me, willingly shared with me uh, the information and their research. And and it was it was a great ride. <laughs> yeah. So that's why natural toothpaste doesn't foam. Huh. Correct. Yeah, they don't. If you get if you don't get the kind with uh, you can get it with it's usually says SLS free. Mm-hmm. And uh, but some people still keep it in there. I'm not sure if Tom's does and stuff like that. I mean, there's varying degrees of natural too, which is also I cover in the book. You go into Whole Foods and there's some not so good things in there. Fluoride is something that we've been OD'd on throughout this entire country without even knowing it. They discovered fluoride. Um, they found it in a river. There is a a group of people, this is going back, I believe it's in the 20s. It, 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 it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't like it was, you know, in the 1700s. It was recent enough. And they had um, um, brown spots on their teeth that they were looking at, but they didn't have any cavities. Mm-hmm. So they found that the fluoride was in the water. And so they attributed this fluoride to them not having cavities, but never mind that their teeth were black because they were having too much of the fluoride, right? So they just threw it in our water which was probably enough that it was in our drinking water, but it's also in your mouthwash. It's in your toothpaste. It's in your dental floss. It's in everything. And so now you're getting too much fluoride. So much so that a couple of years ago, the federal government reduced the limits of fluoride in our water. They they took it down mm-hmm. because children are getting fluorosis and having too much fluoride. 
Water treatment is such a big deal. I'm in Dallas. And Erin Brockovich actually recently was in Plano because she was kind of throwing a protest against the water treatment in that area. She's amazing. And I I was uh, fortunate enough to meet her. Um, I did a trip at Summit at Sea and she was there and spoke. And I was so taken with her. And, And, you know, there you go. There's someone who has spent her entire life working on these issues for the public and really fighting on behalf of the public. And recently, about a month ago, I went to D.C. and learned how to lobby. I, I Again, I'm very serious in the fact that I have, you know, if I'm lucky, another you know, 40 years on this planet, I'm going to do everything I can to make that change. And if you want your issue to be heard, you're going to have to be in D.C. lobbying as the corporations do every month. You're going to have to have someone there, you yeah. know, and we the people can afford that. Is it the FDA that's supposed to regulate these consumer products? Okay, so the EPA is the one who polices like our water, right? And then the FDA falls under food drug. So they will monitor the food and the drugs, but the beauty products, so like the shampoo that you use on your hair is not monitored by anyone, And I think that's what people don't realize, right? If it's a drug and if it's a hand sanitizer and it says it will kill 99% of the germs, well, then you have to have the FDA to approve that. But if you don't make a claim and it just says hair shampoo, you could put anything in there. And unless you get caught, um, it doesn't matter. So the individual chemical that was put into the shampoo was looked at by the EPA, but it is not overall as a product as all those ingredients. No one monitors it. No. Is there a way to completely eliminate these toxins from our lives or can we only mitigate our exposure to them? We, I, we can only mitigate at this point until we work and we all make the effort to you know, get this regulated or to stop buying it. And basically, if you stop buying it, they're not going to make it, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone is waking up. Now, it's like people are seeing it. And so there's this activism. And I think it's fantastic. And I think we're going to see great change from it. For instance, like if you if you have a child who has asthma or if you suffer from asthma yourself, you should know that most stored detergents, the name brands, right? If you look at the material safety data sheet on each ingredient, they all cause respiratory illness. Now, I did a, a test with my own detergent. Just to, actually, I was looking at efficacy. It didn't have nothing to do with the book. And I was looking at the eff- efficacy of my detergent versus Tide. And I noticed that when the Tide came out of the washing machine, it had like a sheen to it, it had a coating. And then when I wrote the book and I looked at the ingredients, I noticed that silicone is one of the ingredients. So what happens is is that it cleans it so well, but then it it could cause fading of your darks, right? Mm -hmm. And so then when that starts fading, then you have to make that brighter. So then they throw in a silicone that's going to make it darker and shinier, right? Just kind of like when you put on your hair, like you put on like a silicone, um, all that stuff is is silicone based, you know, the oils and stuff you put on your hair, suddenly it looks shinier and newer, right? Mm-hmm. Well, these coatings stay on your clothing and then you wear them, your children wear them, all those ingredients are trapped in there and they're breathing them. It's it's People think it's the perfume. Perfume is not great, no, but it's also the ingredients in the actual detergent and that you're wearing on your clothes and that you're inhaling. And you and you don't know it. Uh, in your mattress, you're, you, you know, there's off-gassing from all of our mattresses if they're older or if they're not certified to have uh, be free of flame retardants, uh, particularly if they're foam. You don't want a foam mattress. You want a latex mattress. Mm. Latex is natural. It comes from rubber. Foam is not. Foam is one of the most toxic products that you can uh, buy with off-gassing. Now, you did mention some of the documents that you read in research of your book, but how does the average consumer learn more about what's in their products? Uh, By reading my book. (laughs) Yes, that's what I wanted you to say. Perfect. So I will make it easier for you. You can buy the book. Um, You can get it on Amazon and, 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 you know, it's real simple. Or you you can go to my website, which is christinedemick.com and buy it there. But um, I took a a year and a half to compile all this and it's in there. But if you don't want to do that, the simplest thing you can do is if you're unsure about an ingredient, type it in Google and then next to it, write MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet. And this sheet has to go whenever this chemical is shipped 
so people know if it spills or if anything happens, what to do and how to clean it up. And on that material safety data sheet, you're going to learn what it is. Is it a fire hazard? Is it a carcinogen? Um, will it cause respiratory illness? All of that. All of that. And that that's the, that's the easiest way. So what's next for you? I'm working on second book on the toxins in our life are also very much connected to climate change. Also, um, our planet and the health is directly tied to our health. It's not a mystery. And the more we can reconnect with nature and with our with our planet, the more we're going to heal ourselves. It sounds esoteric, but I don't mean it that way. It's actually, it's it's quite logical. Um, you know, our, our ancestors knew this. And um, I, I think that we need to uh, step back and, and go back in that direction. Right on. So that's the book. But right now I'm also, I'm speaking and lobbying and meeting with, you know, corporations and understanding what they're doing and trying to get more responsibility and, and just spreading the word on this. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Yeah, I can't believe we're done already. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One more time. Can you tell us where we can learn more about you and your books? Sure, sure. So the book is Detox Your Home and you can find it on amazon.com. You can also purchase it at christinedemick.com and find out where I'm speaking. And that that's Christine, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Demick, D-I-M-M-I-C-K.com. And you can also find my products at goodhomestore.com. So if you don't want to make your own solution of vinegar and water and Castile soap, you can buy it at goodhomestore.com. And also there's plenty of information there, my blogs there, and also sign up for my newsletter where I try to keep people um, updated, kind of like a mini book every week in your inbox of letting you know what you can do and uh, protect yourself and your family. And with that, we're going to wrap up another episode. Thanks again to Christine, who provided us with a ton of information, which hopefully you can use to begin detoxing your home. If you have any questions for Christine or for me, or you know an author who you think would be a good fit for the show, let me know. Connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, uh, YouTube, (laughs) or you can send me an email to info at ch1podcast.com. And speaking of YouTube, I've just released a new video series called Chapter One Podcast, Ask Me Anything. In these videos, I'm going to be answering your literary questions about media, marketing, publishing, and technology. Because it feels like those things are changing every single day. And it doesn't matter if you're an author who's been out there for a while, or if you're just starting out, or if you're hoping to one day become an author, you have questions, and in these videos, we're going to answer them. This is going to be an ongoing thing. So send your questions to info at ch1podcast.com. To access the videos, just click the link in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or, you know, wherever podcasts can be downloaded and leave us a five star review. And hey, chapter one is now on Patreon. Just go ahead and click the link in the show notes to join the chapter one podcast Patreon group so that we can continue inviting more authors on and continuing the conversation. All right. Well, there you have it. That's it for me. You all stay awesome. Till next time.